Okay, guys. 318 Mission Impossible. The only thing I changed is I textured that intake valve. I did want you guys to take a look at the splatter across the exhaust valve. The splatter across the chamber. Now, remember what I said? I said the texture might be the best of both worlds, right? You may only lose a touch of flow, but you'll regain some of the advantages that this valve with that evaporation ridge had as far as liquid control, right? So as far as this looks, this looks really good to me. Let's take a look at the bore. I'm going to say a win, guys. That looks, that looks really good to me. Yeah, we've got a little more splattering over here on the right than I'd like, but it's still, it's still very light. And it goes all the way over to the left and all the way over to the right. Let's change the lighting a little bit. It goes all the way around. I think that's going to be tough to beat. Now, I haven't changed the valve job. This still has the, uh, like, five cuts on that valve job. So I have to decide whether I want to do that on all of them, all of the intakes, or I want to go back to a simpler valve job. Because it actually flowed a little better with a simpler valve job. It's interesting to think about. Okay, we've got much, much less powdering on the valve. Much less. Now, this was the valve that we were using. You can see how much the stem gets hit. Okay, now, anyone that wants to uh, apply this experiment to real life, you need to pay attention to the stem. The stem is highly stressed, so you really don't want to be hitting the stem with the burr. Now, if you look at my brand new 318 valves, you can see the shaft is machined, so I would have to run the burr around that radius. And in reality, if you want to do that and make it strong, this would need to be polished in here, right? Do a good job polishing it, keep the stress rises away. Then you can, you can put your texture on this part. Okay. Let's see if we can get a close-up of the texture. The texture, you know, they're, they're valves, so they're they're pretty tough. Even with a carbide, it's it's difficult to get a decent texture on them. The burr that I used was my single cut. Let me show you what it looks like. That's a single cut in fairly good shape. It does wobble a little bit. I don't I don't bend my burrs on purpose. Mine seem to get bent over time, but. I really don't like them bent. I got some V-blocks so I can uh, straighten them out, actually. Okay, as far as in the bowl... I don't know, guys. That looks pretty good. It did change a little bit... A little bit in the bowl. This is little belly that we didn't have before. Right, we still have, in fact, this this is a pretty thick line that follows our our floor fin. But before we had, uh, we had a little more this corner here. There's not really much there this time. Okay, guys. <sighs> what can we see here? It's not the easiest thing in the world to light. Let me, let me try it this way, and then I'm going to change... I'm going to change the lighting and see if we can get a little better on that. Okay, I don't know which lighting is better. Got plenty of dirt on the guide. Dirt. Blue on the guide. And it looks pretty good in the bowl. I'm not going to complain about it. 
Okay, guys, let's see what we got. Now, this was the final, third third cut on the final. This is the fourth cut on the final. So this is the textured valve. I don't know what that banging is. Maybe that's our hot water heater going. And this is DV style with the back cut 178, but this is this is smooth. So what happened? Interesting stuff. Plus, plus, plus. Not huge pluses, but, you know, not bad. Minus, 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 right? Very small minuses. Plus, small plus, small minus, very small plus, very small plus, very small minus. But this one did the fuel better. So as far as I'm concerned, I think I would take it. Okay, we're still 231.1 at 600. You'll have to calculate how many horsepower that is. I'm a little too burnt out already. And it's only Tuesday to uh, to think about how many horsepower we can make with that. Okay, the swirl is kind of interesting too. Um, let's go over the numbers first and I'll talk about dynamics a little bit, I think. We got a minus, plus, equals, minus, plus, Minus, plus, plus, plus. It doesn't start doing anything really until 0.35. Here, 0.35, it started a little earlier. Yeah, it, start, it started with uh, losing it off the short side, basically. That's where you're getting that swirl from. Minus, 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 plus. 27, 34, 27, 92, they're both good. They're pretty much dead until they start to move. They're very similar. Not much of a difference. Now, somebody's going to mention golf ball texture or something like that, right? See how close I can get to that and actually get you guys to see it. Now, what those little divots do is they add little swirls of turbulence all right it's kind of like putting ball bearings on the surface I mean I could try a more aggressive burn give us bigger divots it'll probably cost us some flow and it probably it may not make that big a difference as far as liquid flow so let's take a look at our air speeds and see what's going on Okay, top one is the third, bottom one is the fourth. These pluses and minuses are in reference to these. The pinch, plus, plus, minus. We got good speed across the whole pinch at this point. This is at 600 lift. I should write that down. As far as our roof, we went from 209 to 215. Nice. 221 to 210, so they traded off a little bit. Still, look how close these are. I'll take close. Now, take a look at our short side. It made the short side more efficient, right? Because we got higher air speeds across it. Noticeably higher air speeds. They're flowing almost identical amount, right? These numbers, you would think they would be exactly the same. But now we have that little barrier of, of air against that valve. It's making the air choose to go along the short side. Which one would make more power? I'm going to bet on that one. Has anyone seen something like that done before? I'm sure somebody has done it somewhere. Is it, is it a bad idea? It's a bad idea if you weaken the stem and cause a stress riser and snap the head off the valve. But let's face it, most of the valve breakage that we'll ever see is due more to poor guides and valve float than anything else, really, because how are you going to keep valve train dynamics if your, your valve is flopping all over the place? And I've seen it a lot where uh, the guides start to go and the, the guy doesn't care. He keeps racing it and then just everything's slopping around and just break something grenades the engine 
Okay, I remembered I had a different 318 valve around somewhere. So I dug it up and I put DB's valve angle on it. And the valve on the right is the one we just flowed uh, last cut, which was the third. And we went to the nail head design for the fourth. I, we've done it before on these. I don't remember which one was better. I think the nail head was better. But I've also changed the valve job and stuff at this point. So I, don't, I figured it was worth a try before I go back and reset it to uh, an easier valve job. Okay, I changed the valve job and that cost us some flow. If you take a look at the right, we have all minuses, right? Well, what did the nail head do? It was a minus on top of this. So minus, 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 minus equals plus, plus, plus. It does top out a little better. Are our minuses big? They're not big, but they're not great. I'm at the point now where, to be honest, I really need... I think I need a better set of uh, valves because these are really heavily pitted. And I don't know how much I want to shrink that stem, especially if we're going to be spinning this stuff to 8,000. I really need some better valves, I think. Take a look through your uh, piles. If you have some good valves, let me know. Uh, maybe we'll use them in the in project. I probably need uh, more than one set to get uh, one set of good ones, you know what I mean? Let's take a look at our air speeds on that exhaust and uh, figure out what to do next. Okay, top is the third, bottom is the fourth. You wouldn't figure it would change much, just a little bit different uh, design on the valve. And it didn't change a whole lot if you notice the numbers, right? 300 to 281 minus, plus a little bit, plus a little bit, plus a little bit, minus one plus six, plus two, plus four, plus one. Okay, as far as being even side to side, this is nice from side to side, but it's a little bit lower. Okay, as far as even this way, this one's better in the middle. As far as this, it's better across the floor. Interesting to think about. Remember, this is at 600. And at 600, this one was flowing a little better than this, that one. So those air speeds make sense to me. All right, guys. Um, give me your input on what you'd like to see next on this. Do you want me to go back to the simpler valve job? It's easy enough to do. It's a lot easier than putting all those angles on the other ones, I'll be honest. And... Uh, I may look through my pile and see if I can find some better exhaust valves and maybe do a little stem work on them and see if that's worth a few CFM. Other than that, I, I do like this experiment. I think that was, uh, was worth it. I mean, it's not the first time I've done it, but it's obviously the first time I've done it on a 318 head. And uh, I think it's worthy of some some consideration. You guys let me know what you think in the uh, in the comments. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.